everyone, this is John Williamson with K-12 Food Rescue, and I'm here with one of our national student leaders, and I'm just going to let her introduce herself. All right, well, I'm Vicki Mehta, and I started working with uh, Food Rescue around the summer after my junior year, and um, right now I just graduated high school from Lone Star, and I've uh, actually been working with my former elementary school, Bulls Elementary, since I uh, saw a food waste problem there and really wanted to teach young children about how to prevent food waste and then later partner with K-12 Food Rescue to work with donation as well. So you're in Texas then, right? Yes, I'm in Texas. So how many schools are actually in your school district? So elementary schools, there's about 42 of them. And then with the middle schools and high schools, it gets less and less. So I know probably middle schools is about 15, 20, and then high schools, there's only about eight to 10 of them. And to your knowledge, before you started, was there anybody doing it at all in your school district or was it not widely known about? Or It was not widely known about at mm -hmm. all, especially in elementary schools where I felt that the most food waste occurred. So how did you even get interested um, in this as well? What, what piqued your interest? Well, actually, so ever since kindergarten, really, I realized that food waste was a big problem at Bulls since I attended there since kindergarten. And I remember it was one pizza Friday when I didn't finish my pizza and my teacher, you know, made me throw it out and I burst into tears and I felt like that was just really unfair since I wanted to finish it and I didn't like seeing food waste. And um, then in high school, I took AP Environmental Science and um, also through EPA websites, I found out that food waste ends up in landfills and it's terrible for the environment and also, you know, could be g given to families in need. So after that, I really wanted to do something about it and uh, take that opportunity to educate those who are unaware about food waste and how much it harms so many different areas, you know. So did, so did you find it easy to, to get your school to do this or was it a long process or what? Kind of walk me through the whole start to finish. Right. So I think at first with just the education, it was a little bit easier, but then bringing in donation was where kind of hesitation started. So I decided to like break up my program into education as the first phase and so that was just going to the green team at Bulls Elementary and, and teaching the students about what they can do to prevent food waste how it harms the environment releasing methane gas and how it's wasting food is a waste of money and resources as well so I think that the administration at Bulls was pretty open to that since that was just simple education spreading the word and just coming over there a couple Fridays and going there and just teaching the school. But then the next summer, my summer of uh, after junior year, so leading into senior year, that's when I got into K-12 Food Rescue. And um, once I like wanted to do the share table idea, I felt like there was a lot of hesitation from kind of like the food service director a little bit and then like the cafeteria manager just because they thought there were a lot of like gray areas and not enough staff to manage it so yeah so did the resources that we provide there help you to convince them to kind of overcome those fears or so to an extent because i started with the whole share table idea so having perishable goods being in coolers and being maintained at the appropriate temperature along with non-perishables but kind of what happened is at the very first meeting i had the food service director principal and a food uh, pantry representative from the Frisco Food Pantry. And uh, there were concerns from the food service director that there wouldn't be enough staff to maintain the like temperatures of perishable goods. Mm -hmm. So they changed it to non-perishable goods food uh, share table. And so we were at that, but then there was kind of a delay in the timeline to get that implemented after break. And then um, I had to talk to the cafeteria manager as well, and he seemed very hesitant about having to manage that and there not being enough regulation for that. Mm -hmm. And so then instead of doing a share table, we ended up doing just donations with mm -hmm. the food pantry because the food pantry was a lot more enthusiastic and willing to participate in the program, whereas the school was more 
like head tent and didn't want young students doing the sharing process in case of like life threatening allergies and just like not enough staff to manage it. Yeah, you know, it's interesting around the country, there's some that find the share table to be the easiest, there are some mm -hmm. that find the donations to be the easiest, and then there's others right. that just do a combination of both. And what yeah. we always tell people, doing one or the other is, is perfectly okay, as right. long as you're just not, you know, putting it in a landfill, not offering it to others. Exactly. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so you are headed off to where? To college? Are you going somewhere to college? Or? Yes, I'm headed off to UTSA. Um, and I'm actually really excited to be going there. And one of the reasons why I applied there was because they're very against food waste. And they do a lot within their cafeteria through this thing called Green Thread, where they're very environmentally friendly. They weigh the waste and they do a lot mm -hmm. of donations um, to people in need as well. Do they have a food recovery network chapter? Or are you? Yes, they do. And I think they actually won an award for... Um, making sure like they have a lot of like waste prevention. I think like in 2017, they won a reco a food recovery act challenge. Very cool. Well, yeah. um, so tell me about perhaps what you've left behind um, so that you make sure that the program continues after you've left high school. What steps have you taken to make sure that uh, you know this is gonna continue on? So I felt like me running it alone is kind of what made it harder. So I got Three people from National Honor Society at my high school who are interested in the environment and food waste to continue it at Bowles and I just mm -hmm. like walked them through step by step I gave them all the contact information of people at Bowles and the administration that helped me out and um, so they're just gonna be continuing the education and also working on getting the donations a little more publicized throughout the whole school since that was implemented a little mm -hmm. bit later so do you see possibly someday the whole district might see what's happened in your particular school and, and it might move district wide or? Yes, that's what I'm really hoping for. And um, I know Lebanon Trail High School has also been doing food waste related work with the uh, special needs kids. So I'm not sure exactly how that happens, but maybe it has been spreading a little bit and I just haven't been aware. I'm not really sure, but that's my goal to, you know, keep in touch and like track with it and keep in touch with the volunteers I've sent out. And then also my mom's pretty involved in it as well. So okay. I'm hoping for the best. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm so excited and proud of what you've done. And I'm going to put this on our Thank website you. under our national student leaders. And I look forward to hearing what you do in the future as you move on to college. And we'll see uh, as this grows in your school district, you're going to look back on it and say, man, I did something that the whole district started <laughs> doing. So it's even bigger than probably just your one school. So thank you so much. Right. Thank you. It's great talking to you. I look forward to keeping in touch.